more threatening than it is. It looks a more om ominous. Probably there where it's just panning where you could kind of see a little bit of almost like a shower effect. That was probably some of the uh, activity making it closer to the ground. So here it is once again in replay mode now. Hit and miss showers every once in a while. The computer's thinking, okay, toward Lee Summit, Greenwood, Raymore, it's probably hitting the ground. It's probably a mix. So folks, you really depends on where you are. Some areas are getting it. Some areas are not. Bottom line here is it does not look like it's going to be too heavy. That's for sure. Looking at first alert radar right now, farther south, you can still see that wintry mix. Harrisonville, Peculiar, Cass County going across state line to the Kansas side too. But you've been in the colder air longer and you saw a big boy going through central portions of Kansas. That's where it has been snowing. We're not going to get into that, I don't think. But as you see here from Lawrence up toward Leavenworth and even up toward St. Joseph, bands of all snow as opposed to the mix. But by comparison, look on the plaza. It's totally dry pretty much. Or if it is falling, it's pretty light. Wind chill at 29, temperature 35 degrees. Temps all in the 30s, but all above freezing. 35 in Belton, for example, 32 in Maryville, so right at freezing. And 37 as you're heading down toward Clinton. Road temperatures exclusive here at Channel 9. Don't really see any temperatures below freezing yet. So it is accumulating on grass more likely than on roads. That should be good news for us. But notice how it looks like the better chances for the heavier snow will be lifting up into Nebraska and Iowa, moving away from Kansas City in the viewing area itself. The wraparound effect will finally move farther to the east and away from us. That will occur later on tonight, first portion of your daytime tomorrow. 35 Kansas City, currently 40 Springfield, 34 in Wichita, 37 degrees down toward Oklahoma City. Evening forecast. 39 degrees at 5 with a 30% chance of a wide variety of precipitation. But let me emphasize, it looks light. As long as you slow it down and you hit one of those patches, you should be in pretty good shape. We'll go through the 30s, 8 p.m. 36 by 9 p.m. 35 degrees and staying above freezing for the most part. But the wintry mix should come to a halt after midnight or so. The exclusive first look nine day forecast has whatever is going to fall today melts. Freezing to 46 degrees on Saturday, 31 to 55 on Sunday, Monday, 57 degrees. Look what happens on Tuesday. Another rain snow chance possible 38 in the morning, afternoon high of 50 Wednesday, 44 new information has come in. So Thanksgiving Day does not look as promising as it did. Well, temperature wise, yes, near 50 degrees about average. But there is another system that's just now showing up in the data that could give us a chance of rain on Thursday, possibly on Friday as well. Not all day affairs and even on Saturday too, with the temperatures hovering near 50 for a high morning temperatures finally falling off to the lower or below freezing. That is by Saturday morning and also on Sunday too. OK, all oh, the snow is helping us get in the uh, Christmas spirit okay. a yep. little bit. Something else that's helping <laughs> is uh, worlds of fun. That's right. Winterfest is starting up tomorrow and it runs every weekend through the end of the year. So Donna Pittman is focusing on one of the places there you can warm up. Donna Pittman here at Winterfest at Worlds of Fun and what a cold day it is. OK, it is cold, but I'm sort of playing off of the snow behind me. Don't we need my coat, though, in here talking to Brian Cross, who is the head of entertainment here. And this is a spot where not only can you be entertained, but it's kind of warm up. Yeah, this theater is fantastic. We actually only use it once a year for Winterfest. Um, it's a huge venue. Uh, we've got such a, a large stage uh, with backdrops, a cast that's just massive, fills the stage with characters from uh, the from the Peanuts uh, character um, program here. That's one of the most popular ones, right? The Yes, absolutely. I mean, you've got Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Schroeder comes out and plays the piano. Uh, we we see these characters in a light we've never seen them before, especially in their new costumes and everything else. Yeah, right. I love it. What do you love most about putting on these shows? Can you the reaction of the crowd, the kids? It really is. Um, the kids love this show. It's funny to watch their face just light up when the characters come out. They don't know how to react um, by the end of the show. When Snoopy comes out and everybody sees him as Beagle Claws, as we call him, um, they just get so excited and to see this venue active again for us it's it's an it's an old school stage that we really would love to use more but this production is perfect for it. it's massive okay i absolutely love it brian cross thank you so much for talking to us and coming up uh, local animal shelters are in need of volunteers find out how local students are helping meet that need while getting career experience and one local star wars fan gets the trip of his lifetime thanks to the dream factory without any clues a new survey from True Blue shows that 28% of workers are late to their job at least once a month. So today we're going over some actual excuses that people have given for not being to work on time. First up, 
One employee told a manager, I thought it was a holiday because of the solar eclipse. The Dream Factory makes dreams come true for children here in the Metro, and one child got to visit a galaxy far, far away. KMBC 9's Len Jennings has that story. The force is strong in this one. Star Wars! <laughs> yes! Justice Ellsworth loved his dream trip to Disney's Galaxy Edge, where he got to build his own lightsaber. Flip a switch, and it ignites it, and everyone pulls him up. And we're all just staring at it in amazement, like, oh my goodness, I just did this. Building a lightsaber was a dream come true for this future mechanical engineer. Start my own inventing business. But when he's not saving the galaxy, he back. prefers wielding a fishing pole than a lightsaber. I love fishing. It is probably my favorite hobby every day. At Bass Pro Shops in Independence, the store gifted Justice a brand new fishing pole. We got you a brand new combo, spinning Whoa. combo for you to go fishing. Justice suffers from type 1 diabetes. It was really hard at first because we didn't have all the technology we do today. Doctors diagnose him at just one year old and he admits it has its challenges. You got to do all of these things while simultaneously managing a normal life. But nothing this young Jedi can handle. For the Dream Factory, I'm Len Jennings, KNBC 9 News. Oh, what a cool kid. I'm so glad he got to go on the trip. To nominate a child or even make a donation to the Dream Factory, you can go to KNBC.com and click on the community page. Coming up, we'll tell you about a sophisticated data breach at Macy's. We are less than a year from the 2020 election, and there is speculation about Mike Pompeo running for the U.S. Senate in Kansas. Today we're going over actual excuses that workers have given for being late to work. This is according to a new survey from True Blue. One worker told the manager, my mom has died. The problem is it was the second time that person had used that excuse.
watching KNBC 9 News. We're getting to the weekend and you are tracking some winter like weather. Winter like weather, but don't sweat it too much because it's light, but don't also lift your guard up totally because, you know, a slick spot can take you off guard. But right now the pavement temperatures are warm. I'll show you that in one second. Here's first alert live radar. Heaviest that will be accumulating and probably sticking north of St. Joe and farther westward where you've been in the colder air longer. Look toward Marshall and Sedalia. By the color code, that's all rain farther down to the east and southeast. Maybe a little bit of sleep mixed in, but for the most part, they're light amounts. And as we're looking at the replay, you can tell about where that low pressure center is, which will sweep through, keeping most of the heaviest of the snow closer to the Nebraska-Kansas state line, close to the Iowa-Missouri state line, too, well to the north of us. I mentioned road temperatures and exclusive here at Channel 9, close to the freezing point out toward Leavenworth, otherwise above freezing. So hopefully not too many problems on the roads, but I know somebody could answer that. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, how's it looking on this Friday night? Well, it's looking really good, Brian. I feel like we should have a fanfare of sorts as uh, the shiny new, and I love to say that, shiny new southbound I, uh, 69 Highway uh, from I-35 uh, off-ramp. The Overland Parkway is open and uh, doing well. This is uh, great uh, for those who normally come southbound on I-35 from 635. Not jammed up to a 635 at all today. Now, uh, one thing that we didn't get was any extra lane here on that uh, kind of flyover ramp. So it's pretty much the same as you saw before, but the pavement much better and that's the reason they replaced it having big problems with that on the bridge as well northbound traffic going away from us though mm, the usual heavy stuff through there saw overall lighter traffic on the way into uh, work this morning we think because of the holiday week uh, that a lot of folks are turning it into uh, for next week around thanksgiving back to you in the studio Commitment 2020 News. Kansas Republicans are buzzing about the president's comments today about the Senate race. He told Fox and Friends that if there's a chance that Republicans could lose the open Senate seat, current Secretary of State Mike Pompeo could run. Some Republicans fear that if Chris Kobach wins the GOP nomination, that they would lose the seat that they've held for generations. Here is what the president had to say about Pompeo just this morning. He loves the people of Kansas. If he thought there was a chance of losing that seat, I think he would do that, and he would win in a landslide because they love him in Kansas. Chris Kobach's campaign says that their models show him easily beating the Democrat in Kansas. Mission Hills Democrat and State Senator Barbara Boyer is in the race. Pompeo says that he will be Secretary of State as long as President Trump wants him in the job. Michael Bloomberg hasn't officially announced a presidential run yet, but he is spending money like he has. The former New York City mayor is launching a $31 million ad campaign in key battleground states next week. That is most of the, mon uh, the most money, rather, any candidate ever has spent in a single week of political advertising. He created a pr presidential campaign committee on Thursday. Bloomberg is worth an estimated $52 million. Senator Bernie Sanders has released his plan to help historically black colleges and universities. His campaign says about $1.3 billion would be dedicated to the schools. That is in addition to Sanders' free college plan. To pay for it all, Sanders is calling for higher taxes on Wall Street. The former Boston College student charged in her boyfriend's suicide made her first court appearance this morning. Prosecutors say In Young Yu repeatedly urged Alexander Utula to take his life in the months leading up to his death. The DE, DA claims that you had complete and total control over him, both mentally and emotionally, but you's legal team is pushing back. We should be better. We should be finding ways to help young people in these situations instead of prosecuting them. You has pleaded not guilty. In an agreement with her legal team, the state agreed to just $5,000 bail under the condition she surrender her passport and stay in the U.S. for the duration of the case. If you or someone you know is showing signs of distress, confidential support is just a phone call away. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They can lend an ear and provide information about resources in our area. The Royal Philharmonic Orchestra is parting ways with Prince Andrew over his ties to sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Maggie Rooley has the latest from London. The fallout here at Buckingham Palace continues over that bombshell interview Prince Andrew gave over the weekend and then his unprecedented decision to back away from royal duties. Uh, now the royal family is left with no rule book about what to do next in this historic situation and they're having what many British papers are calling a crisis summit here Thursday at Buckingham Palace. We saw people like Prince Andrew, the Queen got involved. We even saw his ex-wife Sarah Ferguson show up here at the palace trying to figure out what to do next. Now we mentioned he's backing away 
away from royal duties. We've been told he's canceled a planned working trip to Bahrain that was supposed to be happening within the next few days. But uh, what his future holds, what's next, that is still all up in the air. Uh, overnight, one of Epstein's accusers, Virginia Jufry, uh, who has claimed in past court filings that a British socialite, Ghislaine Maxwell, recruited her when she was just 16 and groomed her to have sex with several of Epstein's powerful friends, including Prince Andrew. Um, she came out reacting to the news. Her attorney told ABC uh, Prince Andrew's recent interview and his subsequent action to withdraw from public life is welcomed news. However, she went on to say that more needs to be done. The attorney uh, called his central role in devastating the lives of countless women. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, London. Well, despite the scandal, Prince Andrew is not expected to face money trouble. He's long received financial backing from the Queen's private accounts, and there's no indication that that would change. A commuter train collided with an RV in Southern California early this morning. Firefighters rushed to the scene to put out the fire that it caused. More than a hundred passengers were on board the train. At the time, there were no major injuries on the train or in the RV. St. Louis is going electric. The city purchased 14 new electric buses today at a cost of nearly $19 million. They'll replace diesel vehicles that are retiring at the end of 2020. The new buses will make up the entire fleet running along Metro 70 Grand Line, the busiest route in the St. Louis region. The buses are more expensive to buy, but they have lower maintenance and fuel costs. And Kansas City's first electric buses are set to hit the road next summer. The KCATA bought two of them earlier this year. They make no noise. They create zero emissions. The new buses can go 150 miles on a single three hour charge. Chris Katz is here with what we're now working on for five. Well, uh, snow and ice and now some deadly wrecks on some Kansas highways at five. What you need to know if you are headed out tonight, plus an update to uh, that story out of Colorado where 40 schools in one district were closed because so many kids have gotten sick. But now that virus has spread to the Air Force Academy. We'll tell you what's next at five on KNBC 9 News. One of our arsenal, or one of the tools we have in our arsenal, John A. Rollins News Chopper 9, obviously comes in very handy with flooding and tornadoes and even wintertime weather. Looks like we have right over downtown one of those little bands that's moving through, not much in the way of heavy, just because you can see the horizon in the background, but those are some low hanging clouds. I wouldn't be surprised if we see spits of either a little bit of rain or a little bit of snow mixed in every once in a while, especially down there. Wow, lower hanging clouds there. The visibility is a little lower. Here's a look at First Alert Radar once again, showing you that we do have the specs of 
light precipitation, more concentrated to the north toward 36 Highway Trenton. You're probably going to get some minor accumulations out of this. Farther east and southeast, it is all rain. Farther south and west, it is snow. But the back edge is in with the site, and I think probably within the next few hours or so, we'll start to wind down as far as the precipitation is concerned. But if you are heading out this evening, be prepared to run into bursts of rain and or snow, but most of them are fairly light and not accumulating except for on grass. We'll check out the forecast for the nine day, which has some changes coming into Thanksgiving Day as well. Coming up. Winterfest at Worlds of Fun opens up tomorrow. Donna Pittman got a sneak peek at the last minute preparations. She also found out how the park is partnering up with Sporting KC to help children battling cancer. We are at Winterfest where it is a race to the finish when it comes to decking the halls and everything else. This time tomorrow, they will be open and hosting just countless guests. And I want to draw your attention to this game. Okay, this is, is still being put together. It'll be put together tomorrow at this time. But this is Kick to Victory. And we've been talking to, to Chris Foshi about it. When you come out here tomorrow, this whole area will be set up like a soccer field. Yeah, so it is a Sporting KC themed game. We'll have a goalie in the back. Uh, it's $5 to play. And the best thing is all proceeds will be donated to the Victory Project, which is Sporting KC's uh, nonprofit campaign to help children who are battling cancer and all of life's challenges that go with it. So we're really excited about it. How could you not do that when you come out here? That sounds like a, a great addition. Yes, I mean, you know, the holidays are all about a time for giving and teaming up with such a worthy cause and such a great partner like Sporting Casey, it just made perfect sense for us. And uh, we just couldn't be more thrilled to bring this to Winterfest. Okay, I love it. Okay, uh, we could not do um, this newscast without talking about the food that's out here. So if you've been wondering, it's coming up. We will show you some of the, the new eats that they have and tell you everything you need to know about Winterfest at Worlds of Fun here in just a few minutes. Back to you. Well, millions of Americans are going to be flying next week. Frontier Airlines accidentally told many of them that their flight was canceled. Mm. Plus, there's a new plan to get Johnson County students career ready after graduation. And see how a groundbreaking school is changing the lives of at-risk children. A new survey from True Blue shows that 28% of workers are late to their job at least once a month. So today we're going over some actual excuses people have given for not getting to work on time. Next up, one employee told a manager, I thought today was Saturday. It was in fact Tuesday.
And welcome back. We are live at News Chopper 9. Man, what a fascinating sky we have this afternoon. This is uh, 435. We're right over I-70 looking to the north. To the right is that Virga Brian's been talking about. That's the snow uh, coming out of the clouds, but evaporating before it hits the ground. To the upper right there, you can see the Hawthorne Power Plant as well. But uh, go just a little bit further, and that is a snow shower making it to the ground. We have seen uh, the roads. They are not uh, icy or anything like that at all. Just barely damp from this uh, snow shower that's moving through that went through the Benton Curve couple of minutes ago approaching now 435 around Front Street but uh, uh, even with this uh, we've got a good rush hour going right here on the east side with uh, no issues with this uh, little snowburst at all. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9 back to you in the studio. As the weather is getting colder, Wayside Waves is seeing fewer volunteers walking and running with dogs. KBC 9's Bianca Beltran reports Blue Valley students are helping meet the need while getting some career experience. Hey Foxy! This is what little Foxtrot looks forward to each day. Come on! We're going outside. A chance to stretch his legs and make new friends. He's just a guy with a camera. These it's outings help Foxy. socialize dogs waiting to be adopted from Wayside Waves. Sometimes I've never interacted with human beings at all. And so having that now really helps them adapt to going out into a forever home, going out into the community, and living a good life. It's good for Morgan, too. Some of the dogs in here... Um, that I've met have really changed my life, even just in the day or two that I've met with them. So she wants really to be a veterinarian, and through the and Blue Valley CAPS program, she gets hands-on uh, experience. This class has really showed me that there are thousands of options and opportunities that you can take when going down the animal science route. And she doesn't have to wait until she's working to make a difference. The most rewarding part is uh, seeing them mostly get adopted and find their homes and uh, find their happily ever after. In Kansas City, Missouri, Bianca Beltran, KNBC 9 News. And there at Wayside Waves, they're looking for volunteers who can run with the animals to prepare them for people who are looking to adopt a running partner. Frontier Airlines is apologizing for an email that notified passengers that their flight had been canceled. Thursday, travelers were sent an email saying that there had been a change to their upcoming flights. The airline says that the incident was a technical problem and that that email was sent in error. Frontier says that customers can confirm their flights online. A uh, heads up today for Macy's shoppers. The retailer says that it has uncovered what it calls a highly sophisticated data breach. Macy says the breach happened over a one week period last month. It's not clear how many customers were affected, but Macy says it has reached out to them. Unified School District 232 wants to create a centralized career and technical center. It would help get Western Johnson County students career ready after graduation. The property would be at 83rd and Mize next to Mill Creek Middle School in Lenexa. It would include a new early childhood center and a district warehouse. The district says it could cost $19 million. Teachers across the country try to shape the minds of their students. And one academy in Alabama is able to do that and take it to a whole new level, impacting the minds of at-risk children. Daryl Forges has that story out of Montgomery. The roars of young voices. Young men who don't consider themselves students. Raise your hand if you're a scholar. They consider themselves scholars of Valiant Cross Academy in Montgomery, Alabama. Before they step foot inside the classroom, they start every morning like this. It's called Village. By coming to Morning Village, they get to hear the word I love you three, four times before they go to class. And whatever happened at home, any cobwebs, they get to shake them off. Valiant Cross primarily targets at-risk black boys. The school currently has about 150 students. Scholars like 7th grader Jaden Roberts say the academy has changed him for the better. They helped me have this braveness, have this confidence to to help me just say that, well, I can do anything I put my mind to. Teachers like Jada Davis keep their classes captivating for these young minds to grow inside and outside the classroom. All right, excellent job. Give them my hope is for them to walk out this side of this classroom, to walk outside this building, and to be ready to take on the world. Some of these students will be the first in their family to not only go to college, but also graduate from high school. For many, it's all about breaking an ongoing negative cycle in their families. Make my mom proud. Yeah. Had that hope in the family. And it also shows that it truly does take a village to raise a child. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. And each year that academy accepts about 30 new students. And they have bright futures ahead of them. The plan is to continue expanding all the way up to 12th grade.
Exclusive live radar and nine day forecast. So you'll know first. This is first alert weather. As Johnny said, it looks like the roads are barely even wet in most regards. Farther to the northwest, it's been at least precipitating longer. That may not be the case, but still think it's probably going to accumulate more on grass than on roads themselves. Now, as you know, we're still young in the season. As we get colder and colder and the days get shorter and shorter, it'll probably be easier for it to cling to just about everything. Here's a look at First Alert Radar. Look at these bands that are moving to the north. Chillicothe going farther to the north, Kirksville and Milan. As you see here, St. Joe, also Plattsburgh. Mixed down toward Unity Village, Lee Summit, Raymore. Crossing state line to Lewisburg and Paola, more of a mix. All snow farther out toward Tonganoxie in Lawrence and definitely out to the west as well where it is all snow. And this is where it's probably going to accumulate and stick just because you've been colder longer. Not much sunshine at all all across the region and farther to the north. This is probably a legitimate band as well. Even a little bit of uh, something that looks a little heavier showing up. Not sure if that is sleet. Not sure if that's don't think it's thunder snow, but definitely higher return. So it could be accumulating up there. But by comparison, looking at the plaza, it is mostly dry, although it's cloudy and still a spit of snow is a possibility. North winds at eight, wind chill at 29 with the temperature in the 30s. Speaking of which, road temperatures are getting close to freezing to the north, which is why I think St. Joseph, Rushville, places like that to the north will probably have a good chance of the snow sticking to mainly grassy surfaces. Also Atchison City, probably in that situation. Farther down to the east and southeast with road temperatures in the 40s, not a concern for Warsaw, Stadia and others. Look at our temperature plot from across the area. Still some northerly winds bringing down that colder air that's in place. We're going to drop gradually tonight and the mix will continue, not too widespread, only about a 30% chance you're going to run into it through 9 o'clock or so, going down to about a 20% risk thereafter. First Alert Future Scan talks about what's going to happen. Bands and waves lifting to the north by 7 or 8 o'clock, it may be totally done, but maybe even lighter than what's going to show up on radar. By midnight, 1 in the morning, there's that low pressure spin moving away, cold front being pulled through. Skies will clear out. We'll see some sunshine by Saturday mid-morning or early afternoon, and because of that, we're going to warm up above freezing. Therefore, anything that is falling right now that's sticking will probably start to melt, certainly by Sunday. Looking at the exclusive first alert nine day forecast close to the freezing point. Afternoon high of 46 on Saturday, Sunday 31 in the morning, afternoon high of 55. It warms up even more on Monday, closer to 60 degrees. Morning temperature in the middle 30s, 38 to 50 with a rain snow chance coming in on Tuesday, Wednesday 44. Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, a new system is coming through that could spoil things starting as early as Wednesday night into Thursday, the holiday itself. Friday, also 51 for the high temperature. Saturday, a high of 47. Sunday, a high of 54 degrees. Look at those lows bouncing back and forth between above freezing and then below only on Saturday morning or so it appears. But still look at the bottom. Normal high temperature is 50, normal low 31 degrees. And we're going to get there probably in short order coming up this weekend. All right. Time for the takeaway stories that stood out to us during our four o'clock newscast and Haley, you like that snow in western Kansas. I did. It's a beautiful scene and actually this is a video of the train that was at Union Station this week. The big boy. Doesn't that look like the Polar Express? It this does. is my it first does. thought. My girls love the book. It's mm. the Chris Van Allsburg book and of course it was made into a movie uh, with Tom Hanks. I just love it and that was my first thought I saw that mm. video. Our producer Pat, by the way, though, tells me this wasn't an original idea on my part. <laughs> our, our social media team had the same thought earlier today. So great. Minds think alike. Those yeah. are fun <laughs> pictures to see though. Yep. Well, I just loved um, the way that Blue Valley students who are interested in animal science are getting some real world experience there at Wayside Waste. Um, they are getting, you know, an, a look at all the different possibilities for a career in animal science. At the same time, obviously, they're filling a need because right now they are low on volunteers who can do something like this, take yeah. them out on a walk, take them on an outing. And that's so important for yeah. these dogs to help them be ready for adoption because then they're more used to being out. They're more used to uh, being outside and being around people. And so win-win for everybody. So I think that's a great idea. Win-win here because the Dream Factory, as we know, has been out there for a long time, started by our own Larry Moore here. And now the latest was a young man who wanted to go Dream Factory with Star Wars. And that's all they were talking about making his own lightsaber, right? That's yeah. right. He wants he to become a mechanical engineer or? Yes, and he loves fishing. It's, it's a great story. He was so yeah. well spoken and he uh -huh. obviously had a great time. And, and very so. excited about it. Exactly. <laughs> very cute. Well, today we have been going over some actual excuses workers have given for being late to work. Now, this is according to a new survey from True Blue. Finally, one worker said, there's a bear in my trash can and I'm afraid to go outside. Wonder how that went over.
We are at Worlds of Fun where they are getting ready for Winterfest and I never make a promise I don't keep. We talked about uh, talking about the food that they have and I'm here with executive chef Wesley Boston who has prepared these just amazing looking dishes and I know we can't talk about every single one of them. This right here it has caught my eye. That, that's our pot roast sandwich. It's got cheesy potatoes on it and sweet potato fries, a green Grinch sauce. But uh, Sweet potato waffle fries. So you really did it up on the fries. Yeah, we did. And, and you can see there's a lot of different things that we're doing. Uh, this is a Christmas tree chicken and waffle. This is a caramel fried cheesecake with whipped cream. This is a donut nacho. So you kind of use the donuts as your chip in the nacho and every time you dig in you get a little bit of something else. These are chicken parmesan fries, the, the chicken fries with marinara. Uh, a lot to choose from. If you can't decide what you want, we offer a tasting card that'll take you on a culinary tour around the park and you get a little sample version of uh, one of about anywhere from 12 to 16 different items we have available. I love this and you told me you love what you do. I can tell I can tell by what we're seeing here. This looks amazing and I can only imagine oh, that it what's tastes. What I love about it? I mean, the holidays, the, the, the colors, the lights, the food. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a lucky chef. I think this is just gorgeous. I'm bringing my family out here and, and I would awesome. encourage anybody to, you don't have to leave town to have just a spectacular right experience. So Worlds of Fun, Winterfest, really just about 24 hours from now gets underway. Back to you. KNBC 9 News starts with first alert weather. Icy conditions are causing trouble for drivers tonight, especially in Kansas, where there have been two deadly wrecks. The accidents in Rush and Reno counties where the drivers lost control of their cars. The highway patrol is warning all drivers to avoid the western part of the state where the roads are partially or completely covered. Well, that weather is moving our way. In fact, right now, MoDOT and KDOT crews are treeting area highways. Chief Meteorologist Brian Busby has a look at the start of the weekend in your first alert tonight. I'm thinking that the amount of juice the system has to work with by the time it gets to us will be limited as opposed to those folks who are out below freezing for several hours, if not days, which is why it was definitely accumulating out there. Still think this batch is going to be the one that does seem to stick the most up toward uh, Nebraska, Iowa, northwestern corner of Missouri, Tarkio, Maryville. And if you have pictures from up there, please send them in there. That way you can tell the weather story. Trenton, Chillicothe looks like all legitimate snow. Farther south, it's all legitimate rain because you're pretty warm, Sedalia. Looking farther west, here's the next batch that's moving right along the turnpike. As mentioned, maybe accumulating on grassy surfaces more so than on roads. But still, we have to deal with this for several more hours. And after the sun goes down, it may get a little bit on the side streets, but right now it looks like it'll be mostly wet, if anything else. I know somebody else is keeping a good eye on that. It's Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9. Earlier, you are saying that the roads looked wet at best. Yeah, and some here, just a couple of places where we had those snow showers, uh, Brian, but really not a big deal, and uh, certainly not out here. The I-35 Overland Parkway merge going away from us, headed up to 75th Street, the usual slow stuff there, but surprise, how about this? The southbound run now, that brand new off-ramp, southbound I-35 to the Overland Parkway is open, and that is huge news for those who've had to go all the way down to 435 as an alternate route to get around this, and I wonder if the word really hasn't gotten out yet, because look how few cars are using that off-ramp. So maybe a few days before everybody figures it out. This is uh, pretty obvious that those who used to use this have found an alternate route and uh, are no longer headed in this direction. I'm sure that'll change over the next week or so. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. That is very good news for sure. All right, the same weather system caused this mess on I-25 in Denver last night. A 50-vehicle wreck. Somehow no serious injuries, but obviously debris on the uh, highway was everywhere. People were seen outside wearing blankets as first responders helped clear that scene. Well, first alert traffic warning for this weekend. You may want to avoid the downtown loop. MoDOT crews will close several ramps as they continue to work on a new Buck O'Neill Bridge. Starting Saturday morning, just after midnight, they will close five ramps along southbound I-35 in the downtown loop, plus four spots on northbound I-35, including right at the I-670 interchange. All will reopen just before noon Sunday. Breaking news out of Caldwell County, Missouri, where the sheriff confirms the remains of two missing brothers from Wisconsin have been identified. Justin and Nicholas Diemel disappeared in July. Nicholas's remains were found at a farm outside Bramer, Missouri. Justin's were found in a livestock trailer in Lincoln County, Nebraska. Suspect Garland Nelson remains in custody, already charged with the murders of both men. Right now, police are investigating the discovery of human remains in a wooded area near North Kansas City Hospital. A hiker made that discovery Wednesday south of the hospital on Clay Edwards Drive. 
The remains include a skull in an advanced state of decomposition. There is no evidence of criminal activity so far, but the medical examiner is working to identify the remains and determine a cause of death. A crime alert in Blue Springs where police are looking for vandals who targeted a city park. KNBC 9's Emily Hallwick is live at Old Mill Park with a look at the damage and how the city is responding. Emily? Well, the backboard has already been replaced. It's all been cleaned up after vandals shattered it yesterday evening. We talked to the head of Parks and Rec in Blue Springs, and he says that they are going to be putting in more cameras in this park to make sure that they could catch future vandals. Whoever vandalized this basketball hoop might not realize it is a crime um, and it is a felony. So, I mean, people would be charged for that type of stuff. There could be serious consequences, but the culprit who caused this damage at Old Mill Park in Blue Springs has yet to face justice. And it's just unfortunate that uh, some people um, think that it's, you know, that they're hurting someone and what they're doing is they're hurting the community. The park just got a $3.1 million makeover this summer. The sad part is, is uh, the taxpayers here in Blue Springs had voted for a tax, uh, you know, to upgrade a lot of the parks. But since then, it's not only the basketball hoop that's suffered. We deal with vandalism on a daily basis, whether it's somebody come out and spray paint a playground and put inappropriate words on a playground that then a five or six year old has to see. The head of Parks and Rec wants the community to be vigilant. If you see something, say something. Hopefully through some diligence of our of our residents that um, we'll get to the point where hopefully we can curtail this activity and maybe even find out who's doing it. His team plans to put up more cameras to catch criminals. You can't put cameras everywhere, uh, but if we have key areas that maybe there's blind spots that we'll look at